So I was at work yesterday, I'm doing my thing, I'm wearing my mask because I'm being responsible, and then all of a sudden, there's something's like tickling the back of my neck. And so I figure it's just the threadbare mask, like the little straps that go over your ears. And it's just fine. I got my earbuds in over top the strap, so I have to take my earbud out to pull the mask string off to clear it off and sort of fuss with my hair in the back. And as I'm putting it back on, I feel something fall from like where my ear is down into like the low part, which is already kind of gross because I figure, oh, it's like wax or something, which... You know, I haven't had wax problems in my ears since I was listening to, you know, Monster Cat on full volume back in middle school. So I was like, I haven't had wax problems that bad. So I was already like, oh, got to get that off and then I'll clean it off or something. And as I'm, I'm, you know, I see, I see the wax fall off, off my ear and onto the table. Um, and then I notice, um, that it's not wax. It's a spider. It's a freaking spider. There are a few times in life where I am so horrified that I just go quiet, just completely quiet. The first time I ever rode on a roller coaster, this happened. I was on the roller coaster, no idea what to expect, and after we crest over the top and we start careening downward, I think that I would scream. That would be my impulse, to exclaim joyously or out of terror, but there was nothing. Silence. Nothing came out. I almost went catatonic when I brushed off my my head, off my ear, and then a spider like this big lands on the table and starts crawling around. That is an absolute no on every single possible level. I know that spiders serve a purpose. They kill other bugs. I get it. All right? But you know those ceiling tiles that are everywhere that do nothing? You know those those white tile ceiling things that if they get one drop of water on them, they bulge, turn brown, and disintegrate into pulp? Yeah, those things that we're still building houses with for some reason? Apparently we're in Candyland and all we can afford is cotton candy ceiling. Now I gotta worry about the fact that there's just some sort of a mystical spider dimension above my head at all times because I can't think of a single other possible way that spider got on my head other than dropping or dangling from the ceiling, which is an absolute no on every single level. I don't have arachnophobia, but just the sheer fact out of all the fears that humans have, there are just certain ones that we know the names of. Everybody at some point in their life pulled up some list online of funnier, quirky, weird fears that people have just so they could look at the crazy names that they have. But everybody knows arachnophobia. Everybody knows what that means. There is something primal, instinctual about fearing it. I don't know if it's the sheer number of legs that makes us uncomfortable. I don't know if it's the speed at which they move considering how small they are. I don't know what it is, but it's bad. <laughs> Baseline spider design is rather effective at horrifying pretty much everything. But when you get into jumping spiders, why? Why do we need jumping spiders? Why, why? Why do we need spiders that jump? Why? Or in other parts of the world where their spiders are like the size of a catcher's mitt? <laughs> no. Spiders need to be nerfed, not buffed. I will say that till the day I die. In the scouts, some mornings you'd wake up and the outside of your tent is just covered in daddy long legs because you're out in nature, you're on their turf. Perfectly respected. You brush them off, you pick them up, and you release them into the woods. I'm not going to kill them because I'm intruding on their space. The moment one of those guys is in my house, they have crossed a threshold. I'm just glad I was able to react fast enough to kill the scout because who knows how many of those guys are just hiding up in that ceiling. So now I gotta worry that other spiders are gonna figure it out. Everything about the design of the spider was God's little message of saying, stay away from this thing. It has an inordinate number of eyes so it can sense your presence 
It's got an inordinate number of legs, so it can move towards or away from you quickly, depending on what its mood is. If you've ever seen, like, high-res, in-depth HD images of spiders' faces, you'll understand what I'm talking about. When I am at work, I am hoping to be in a sort of place where I'm not worrying about whether there's a Cossack hiding in the rafters like in Sherlock Holmes 2. That is not the place I want to be, where at any moment one of them can just yell cowabunga and fall from the sky on my head. I have seen the documentary Charlotte's Web, and when those little babies take off into the sky, everybody else is getting like all choked up with warm feelings. The first time I saw that, all I was thinking about was, they fly? Spiders can fly now? What, what, when, did, when did this happen? Who, who decided this? Why wasn't I consulted? Spiders, they're, 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 they are lying in wait. They're lying in wait for you to, to slip. They're just waiting. I, I had shivers for like the next half hour just thinking about what it was doing when it was on my head. No. No. No thanks. No thanks. Watch your backs.